On July 8, 2019, Clinton Planning and Zoning Commission's chairman was being pressed to go into executive session to possibly hire a new permanent zoning enforcement officer. This came to Jim Conley and my attention when an email she sent to members of the commission came into our possession. To put this into context, on November 7, 2018, the Board of Selectmen appointed David Leipard to be Clinton's new zoning enforcement officer, replacing Eric Knapp, who had resigned in May of 2018. Mr. Leiper remained less than six months and resigned abruptly after his last appearance at the Planning and Zoning Commission meeting on March the 11th, 2019. On April 9th, 2019, Zippo 6 reported that a joint meeting of Clinton's Board of Selectmen and Land Use Commissions appointed Mike D'Amato, the interim zoning enforcement officer, on April 1, 2019, to be paid $4,000 per month to be present in the land use office one day per week. Finally, two months and 12 days later, the permanent position was posted on June 12th. When Jim Conley and I got wind of the effort to bum rush a favored candidate to the hiring process, we wrote this memorandum to the Planning and Zoning Commission supporting the chairman's efforts to prevent this and to stop an executive session that was completely inappropriate. Here is the reading of that letter and the meeting that followed. Action! Uh, agenda item 12, old business. Is correspondence? Old, old, correspondence? I'm sorry, correspondence. Okay. Um, so, is the secretary, is, uh, is the secretary outlined the correspondence received? Something. Memorandum from Kirk Barr and James Conley dated July 8, 2019. Is there any other correspondence? All right, I can read that correspondence requested that it be read in the record. To Clinton Planning and Zoning Commission from Kirk Carr and James Connolly dated July 8, 2019, regarding executive session concerning zoning enforcement officer vacancy. A copy of the email to the Planning and Zoning Commission regarding a request for an executive session concerning the vacancy in the Zoning Enforcement Officer position at the July 8, 2008, July 8, 2019 meeting agenda has come to our attention. If the Planning and Zoning Commission wishes to have a discussion regarding this vacancy under new or old business, it should not be held in executive session. The position has been posted on the town website since June 12, 2019 and stipulates applications will be reviewed on a continual basis until the position is filled. Executive sessions may be held under the Connecticut Freedom of Information Act upon an affirmative vote of two-thirds of the seated members present, or six, assuming nine members are seated and present. General Connecticut Statute Section 1-225 Subsection F. The emphasis on the word may above reflects that the statute, while permitting an executive session for the reasons in enumerated, does not require one with the words shall or must. Legitimate purposes for restricting public access in, a, in an executive session enumerated under section 1-225 subsection 6 indicate a discussion concerning the appointment, employment, performance, evaluation, health or dismissal of a public officer or employee provided that such employee may require that discussion be held at an open meeting. As there is no individual who may require an open meeting, holding in an executive session may not be required or even permitted. Under the current Town Clinton Charter 8-13, Planning and Zoning Commission shall hire a zoning office, an enforcement officer who shall enforce provisions of the zoning regulations. However, the new Town Charter Clinton Town Charter, which is duly approved by the voters of Clinton to go into effect November 19, 2019, strips the power to hire the Zoning Enforcement Officer from the Commission as follows. Section 8-17, Zoning Enforcement Officer, the Town Manager shall hire a Zoning Enforcement Officer following a recommendation by a search committee appointed by the Town Council who shall enforce the provisions of the zoning regulations. In this matter, the Planning and Zoning Commission is quote-unquote lame duck. To appoint a zoning enforcement officer with no collaboration with the Board of Selectmen would be an act of very bad faith and would potentially conflict with the new and improved form of town government governance. 
If there are any, any candidates who have applied for the position, discussion of the process by which they may be selected should be discussed in open session and not in executive session. We, we trust the members of the commission will not add this to the agenda as an executive session and will, and will avert making the discussion, this discussion in any opaque or attempt to circumvent the provisions of the new town charter that is in effect in November. Is there any other correspondence? No. Agenda item 12, uh, old business or unfinished business. Uh, okay. First of all, I want to apologize. I'm sick of the dog right now. I've got three cough drops in my mouth, so I can actually get this out. Tonight is an important meeting. I am the person who asked for executive session. It shouldn't come as any surprise to anybody, because at our last exec at our last meeting, we all agreed that executive session should be kept on the agenda for every meeting. I request, after not seeing it on the agenda, I requested and, and was told a half an hour after the deadline on Friday that we're not going to have executive session. So, right. So there's that. I, I also wrote that I could only assume that it's some political thing because the first selectman was at our executive session. So we have been talking to the selectman about this item. Alan Kravitz and I agree that one of the biggest problems we have right now is the lack of enforcement in our zoning regulations. CVS, for example, right now is in uh, violation of their agreement. But we don't have any way to make them go mow their lawn, turn on their watering system, and make the place look nice, right? We have, we're paying $4,000 a month for uh, one day a week for a great guy who's doing a great job to come in here. I asked for executive session because I do want to talk about a specific per person. I, I would, would have invited that person in, which means I would have been following all the rules. I'm hoping that the chairman will recognize the two selectmen. What should have happened is what happened on all the other zoning when we hired zoning enforcement, is that the leadership of our commission should have went to the selectmen and they should have put somebody up uh, to work with a committee, like last time, on this commission. Now, I've got people writing letters thinking there's some kind of conspiracy theory going on. I've got, you know, I'm sure this will end up on, uh, on, on Facebook tonight, that, oh my God, Commissioner Bousquet, is, you know, these, they're trying to circum circumvent the charter that isn't even happened yet. I mean, are we, are we saying we don't even want a CEO until you know, November? I mean, the, we were supposed to have a planner two years ago. If, the select, if we have applications, the time limit has expired. We, we can hire anybody at any point. Of course we should be respectful and work with the select. But it goes both ways, right? The select should be working with us. We haven't heard anything, or at least I haven't heard many of our commission members. I don't understand what the, what the big deal is here. Madam Chair, are, are you moving to add an executive session to the uh, I'm not, I, you know. Because uh, a, a movement to amend the agenda would have been in order at the very beginning of the uh, I don't need an executive session. I wanted, I would, I'm hoping that the select, that, that the chair will recognize for a conversation to happen so that we can get our, our house in order and start moving forward and, and take all this political junk and put it to the side. Madam Chair? Okay. Uh, I don't think there's any political junk. I think we have a really fine interim person who's working here doing a lot of cleanup, setting up systems, finding holes, making patches. It's working well. There's a process going looking for candidates. And I would like to move that we adjourn the meeting. We, we actually have an additional uh, uh, items on the agenda. We can say our new, our new, uh, our new uh, business items. I'm sure. We cannot, yeah, we, we, we can't adjourn until we have done. I'm sorry, I didn't see anything else to do. I'm not sure. Commissioner okay. Buscay. Sure. What is the process? Don't even you answer. Other people answer. What why, is, what why, is, Gary? Why do we want to enter here? I have tonight? the floor. I have the floor. Oh, that's a chair. mistake. I'm, ask, I'm asking for me. Just for me. I'm going to try to be funny. What is the process that we're using to hire a CEO? We are using it. Because it's not what we used last time. It's not what we used to hire Mr. Now. 
right? Uh, <laughs> there was another guy last time when you dated. Make sure now you haven't been right. Sorry. At this point. I, I don't care what. Make sure this guy, you haven't been right. Now. I thought I still had the plan. Right. Make sure this guy. I don't care what the plan is. I really don't. I don't care who gets the credit for hiring this person. But let's hire a CEO. All right. Are you making a motion? I'm not. <laughs> All right. I'm making a statement right. that. Come on, guys. Madam Chair. Uh, Commissioner Rossi. Oh, Commissioner, all right. Commissioner, you want to go first? Well, I, um, I understood from you that uh, there was a request from the uh, first selectman, sorry, uh, for members of this commission to be appointed to a hiring uh, committee. Is that the truth? This is correct, and I intended to discuss well, that, that under due business. Well, then that answers uh, Carrie's question. Would you please address it? Okay, well, uh, I intended to address that under due business. Well, you can okay. do it now, Alan. So can you move along? So uh, shall we move along to new business? Yes. Yes. All right. Well, I have a question. Well, Commissioner Hughes still has a question. Yeah. Gary, if you, had, you said you had someone you wanted to bring forward here for the CEO. It's inappropriate to discuss because that would be in no, no, see, that, that's what we don't want. We don't want it in executive session, Gary. You have someone in mind. Why don't you bring it up so we can talk about it? I'm with you. Talk about it. Mr. Hughes, that it would be out of order because... It's out of order to do it in executive session because it hides what, what from people are yes, behind. It's also you have to be transparent. It's Gary, also, you don't want to be transparent. It's also out of order to be doing it in public session without that individual being notified in advance. Uh, as to, uh, well, did that person put an application in there? Commissioner, I can just discuss it. Yeah, okay. Well, we don't need executive decisions. I'd like to make a comment if I could. Commissioner, Commissioner I, do believe, I do believe it's an absolute utmost to have a zoning enforcement officer for us full time to review the bill tonight, to review the bill tonight for $4,000 a month, which is almost what a previous zoning enforcement officer was making on a weekly basis. We have one gentleman working one day a week costing us the same amount of money as a <clears throat> law enforcement officer that was here full time. I look at it and I am more than aware, and when Gary says it's old business, there is old business that goes back to many years where today, recently, there are several failures, several failures because we don't have a zoning enforcement officer. It's that important. We are lacking in the community, we are lacking as a commission, and making sure that the enforcement officer is doing their job. I'm going to agree with Gary about that. I really am. I'm going to make a stand as a commission member and say that since 2012, <coughs> Two Nod Road has been a major failure that's in a massive shutdown now because of DEP and a lack of having a proper zoning enforcement officer to do their job. So I, I, I understand this is an utmost importance that we now have a major landfill going on that is about ready to be shut down. And I look at it and I go, when are we going to get one that is actually effective in the land use office that will do their job? I think it's at the up, utmost. But to sit there and to not have somebody or to make sure that their paycheck is attractive enough, I think we're failing ourselves. You're not going to ask one good person to come out as a zoning enforcement officer and to do the dirty work of everybody in town expecting to do it for the salary that we're paying. At this point, uh, you know, uh, the... the the uh, position has been advertised uh, both online and on the town website. Uh, it is my understanding that there have been responses. Uh, we have a, uh, a temporary zoning enforcement officer who is in here one day a week and who is available by call or email uh, the rest of the time. We had a memo from him this evening. He obviously is uh, you know, working actively in the position. We have had a request from the uh, First Selection's <coughs> Office to appoint two individuals to be part of an interview committee uh, for the recruitment of a new zoning enforcement officer. Uh, I feel that it was, is appropriate for us to, uh, to uh, go forward with the process in that way. Uh, we, as a commission, certainly you know, will want to, uh, to evaluate and pass upon the uh, person recruited as the CEO, 
but to do this without the input of professionals who have done this job on a day-to-day -day basis, which is to say the interim CEO that we now have, uh, the individual from the River Cod, Lauren Downs, um, who uh, worked before, both of whom will be part of the interview, uh, the interview committee, to, to make that evaluation without the input of uh, people who have professional experience in this field, I believe would be quite foolhardy. Uh, I, you know, the the uh, advertising has been carried out, uh, both internally and uh, externally. As I say, the, uh, my information is that there has been response, and uh, I would like to go ahead and appoint two individuals from this commission to serve as part of the uh, uh, of the interview committee. Um, as I say, I wanted to discuss this under new business rather than old, because I believe it is new. Uh, and uh, the, the, this entire matter is brought up under old business instead. I, uh, I further believe that it would be inappropriate to go into the executive session to discuss a particular individual. At this point, the, uh, the notice is required. Uh, the notice has to be carried out officially from uh, the town, not from one of us you know, talking to somebody. Um, and uh, we, uh, that uh, we, we need to go through the appropriate channels in order to do that. Um, in terms of those appointments to the, uh, the interview committee, uh, I would like to make that appointment bipartisan. I would like to appoint uh, uh, the, um, Vice Chair uh, Commissioner Kravitz and uh, our Secretary Chris Emskovich to that committee. Um, and I believe that this is the way that uh, we should go forward with the zoning recruitment, the zoning officer recruitment. In terms of the notion of holding executive sessions, uh, whatever on earth was said in prior meetings, we are constrained by the state statutes. Uh, they ended up, I, and that is the reason that I, you know, I can uh, check with our attorney in terms of what is legal uh, for a, um, uh, an executive session. His response, I sent out, uh, paraphrased, uh, to all of the members of this commission last Friday when I made the decision not to hold the executive session. Um, it appears that this uh, email has um, gone beyond that. I, you know, when something is out as an email, it can end up just about anywhere. Um, I, uh, I don't know who it is who has passed it along, but someone did. Um, but I feel that this is the way that we should handle the recruitment of the CEO uh, to evaluate those applications that have the interest that we have apparently uh, received so far. Is there anyone uh, who wishes to make other comments about this? Uh, Has it been advertised in a newspaper? Uh, most of Commissioner Shannon, I'll you know, uh, recognize you now. You want to, uh, You've now been recognized. Do you want to make your question? Do you ask your question? Yes. Has, has it been advertised in a newspaper? Uh, uh, these days, days, apparently, we don't advertise uh, <coughs> newspapers much. That most people who are looking for uh, jobs are uh, consulting online sources. Uh, that's that's where the advertising, to the best of my knowledge. And have we had trouble recruiting such an officer? There are not, it's my understanding that there are not large numbers of qualified zoning enforcement officers in the state of Connecticut available. It's my understanding that um, uh, it, it is challenging to recruit, uh, to recruit um, fully qualified individuals. The uh, person who we recruited previously was recruited with the condition that he come up to speed in terms of his credentials within, I think, the first year of his employment. Okay. Um, you'll recall that he uh, left the job well before that. Madam Chair. Uh, Mr. Hughes, yes. Do we have, I wasn't clear, maybe you said it, but I missed it. Do we have two applicants, do we have applicants that put the applicant down? It's my understanding that there is interest in the position. I cannot give you a number. Why? I, I don't know a number. Uh, once, uh, you know, once, uh, the, uh, once we have appointed uh, individuals to the interview committee, uh, then they will be, you know, you know participating. Who else is on the interviewing committee? 
as I mentioned previously, um, again, I, I have trouble with this man's first name. I believe it's Torrin Downs. Torrin Downs, Torn 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 who is you know, who served previously as <coughs> interim CEO, and he is uh, with the River Cop. Right. Uh, he will be a part of the committee. Uh, someone from you know, appointed by Inwood Wetlands will be part of the committee. Okay. Uh, Michael D'Amato, who is our interim CEO, will be part of the committee. Uh, and the selectmen uh, are appointing perhaps two members as well. I can't tell okay. the exact number, but that's, the, that's what we're talking about. Uh, so Why do you think they're going to be? I will inform the selectmen tomorrow morning of the individuals appointed, assuming that they accept the appointments, uh, and they will be contacted uh, as to meetings. Probably will be determined about uh, by the number of applications uh, and level of interest uh, that is out there. Uh, Commissioner Kravitz. Yeah, I just want to say that uh, we've discussed this at the regional level, and there's five towns in the region that are looking for CEOs, and there's probably 30 jobs in the state going vacant because there aren't any people. Simple, no people to fill those jobs. Planner, it's, it's true of both planners and uh, zoning enforcement officers. Finance directors, town managers, maybe. Uh, so, would it be safe to assume that given 30 days, we should be able to have Alan and Chris come back with a recommendation to be voted on at our next regular meeting? If we don't have any confidence. Well, I don't. I, I, I provided there is an app after review. Well, I think that I think the now that it's been advertised, and there obviously this the, the committee is being set up because there are applicants. I mean that's the, that led to the establishment of the screening committee. I, I I would say that it would probably be appropriate to request that they report on what's happened. There is the possibility that the report would be we had so and so a number of applicants and none would be deemed acceptable. I mean, that, that could happen. I, mean, I think it would be appropriate to request that they report, but I don't see that, that we can demand that they come back with a recommendation. I'm not asking for a recommendation. Yeah, the person. Yeah. Actually, I can't say because it was spoken in the executive session. I don't, I don't know what the delay is. I don't know why this is such a hard procedure. Melon just told you there aren't a lot of candidates, Gary. It closed 23 was, days ago, right? So I don't believe that it has been closed. So I it, believe that it's added. There's no deadline, right? So so what could happen is as, as they're reviewing, more applications are coming in. We've got to review those applications. And more applications can come in. So we'll review those. And maybe by the time the new charter is enacted, we'll have a CEO. I, don't I, think, I think I think everybody wants a CEO, a good CEO. I really do believe that. I believe and, that. And by the way, the process is something that we've used in the past to hire, to try to hire a planner. I said, and Mike and I sat on a review committee for a planner what a year and a half ago, about a year and a half ago, and you know there was a subsequent committee. And this committee, the CEOs, basically structured this way. We've been doing it really for a long time. It's a it's a classic way to recruit Mr. Biscay. I've said this probably at the last four meetings. I'm 100 percent for this. I think this is a very good plan moving forward. I think it's transparent. In between meetings, we get no information from you. How does Mike Rossi know what he just said at the meeting, but the rest of us don't? We should be getting information in between the meetings. So you say, well, you brought it up under all business. But if I knew what Mike Rossi knew, I wouldn't have brought that up. And it's a valid point to say, why does Mike Rossi know something that I don't know? Or he, why do I know something that Bethany Knight doesn't know? What did he know? I didn't what, hear it. What he knew say? about the plan from, from the first selectman to set up this, this group. That's a great thing. But I, is next month going to be the fifth meeting where I ask, for you to give us the information, you shouldn't. You shouldn't be holding information. Right. I, I am not aware. Uh, um, 
Uh, I, I do not know how it is that, uh, that Commissioner Rossi knew that uh, this was uh, with, uh, this was set up. I cannot speak. But did you know? Um, I believe that I, I, I'm trying to remember it was past Friday that I did this. Um, if you wish, wish to address the question to Mr. Rossi, uh, to Commissioner Rossi, you can. I'm, I'm just respectfully asking mm -hmm. you, in between meetings, so we know we're going to back up, so we don't get here and all of a sudden get the knowledge and try to figure out what's going on. In between meetings, please send us the information. Of course, we can't all email back. That would be immediately what we But please give us all the information we need to do our jobs once we get here. Um, I have supplied information as I have had it. Uh, uh, Mr. Askovich. So, I mean, in light of what's been put together tonight, obviously, it's a good first step on what we're supposed to do. We spend a lot of time complaining that there's no interaction with other departments and, you know, uh, you know, other people within the town about what happens here. And obviously, this is, you know, a good first step, yes. It's, it's, you know, the greatest way it all happened, no. I mean, does it take an email to rattle some cages and get things happening? I guess it does. I don't know. You know, but I mean, it's happened. It's done. The word's out there. You know, I mean, to sit here and say, I can't agree, you know, that within 30 days we know something. It, it, it's going to be a difficult position. We all know that. You know, we, we jumped into it last time. We had a guy here for six months, eight months, whatever happened. I mean, just, you know, that whole thing. I mean, so, you know, my opinion is it's, it's great that we're putting together a committee. And it's, an, it's a, you know, not just an exclusive, exclusive committee. It's a group of people from our department, other departments. And that we can sit down and have a conversation about it. So that at least we're going into this thing. The last time it didn't happen that way. And, it, and you know, and look at how it ended up. I mean, it's a very, it is a very important position. And I, with Jeff, it's, you know, not great that we're paying four thousand dollars a month for one day. But what else are we going to do? If you can't fire a hire or find somebody that we can hire full time, you know, at least we have something here. Um, we can't be without it. So. And it's my understanding that the individual that we do have now is being efficient, mm -hmm. uh, that he is available for the, that one day. Uh, but. Uh, you know, in terms of communicating to you what I know, um, I have done that. Uh, I, I, it is not that I have had information for four weeks that this community existed and have not uh, forwarded that to anybody. I did not. Okay. Commissioner Hughes. Uh, Garrett, well, I'm the defense of our chairman. I, I believe she didn't know. She doesn't know. And I hear you. 30 days, but that's not going to happen in 30 days. You know, everybody, everybody in this room knows it's not going to happen in 30 days the way the bureaucracy in this town works. It's just not going to happen. So I know you keep on asking and asking. I don't think the woman knows. She didn't know. And I guess it's, I don't think it's the people in this commission that's holding it up. I think it's other people. And it is a difficult position, but are we going to have an answer in 30 days? But we got to get one. I, I, I agree. I believe we can have an answer from the commissioners who we have appointed to the interview committee as to what the status is. Yes. And if the, if the answer is. Don't overpromise. Don't over, over promise if, if, the, if, if the answer is we don't had, over didn't have a meeting, uh, then that's the answer. Mrs. Dalton, I'd like to just mention that there's two really two positions that are available, one for a wetlands position and one's for and they're all combined in one individual. Yeah. And there might be a chance that we have to separate the two of them for a while in order to get a candidate educated enough on all of those. And I think that that might be an option we can look at, that maybe a wetlands officer and a zoning enforcement officer for a temporary time being gets entertained. And that's just an idea to throw out. And I was hoping we could end up with the old business being done going to the business with that. Well, the, um, uh, right now, our temporary CEO is not our temporary uh, wetlands officer. I understand the wet, yes. the wetlands commission appointed uh, two of their members to be the temporary. <coughs> the recruiting is for someone who has the professional credentials to do both.
uh, we used to have a very good tracking system so that we immediately were made aware that an application had changed and the applicant had to amend his application. And I think we have to go back and do that because we lost sight of what was going on and I think the applicant also sort of lost sight of what was going on. And I, I, I just think that we need to track Track changes, just catch, catch changes, and uh, have the ad, the application, the applicant file an amendment, amended application. That'll trigger the the the, uh, rec the record because I think it was embarrassing. No, it's not a motion. It, it, it's an administrative action. Okay. It doesn't require a motion. So what you're requesting is that when someone puts in an application. And then comes back and with a, with a with a change with a substantive change in the application that if they are required to file an amended application and it triggers a process of recording that we then can track all the steps in an application because they filed it and it got lost. Let's face it, we ended up with they had they had egg on their face, but we did too. So we would like. Um, so what we want to do is perhaps to ask uh, our, our clerk to scratch your head about how to do this. Is that, yeah. is that basically what you're asking? Yeah, but I think it involves actually amending the application. So that we should have 19-101 A, B, C? A, B, C, yeah, absolutely. Right. So perhaps we should, so what we would like to do is perhaps to ask to think about whether or not yeah. that could be done? Build it, build it into uh, the, the process, yeah, absolutely. I, I think that would just require staff to work with me to do that because I wasn't aware of a lot of the changes because they meet at the staff level and I'm not part of that. And so changes are often made that I'm not aware of until I get documentation. Right. So we need to have just to, you. So basically, you need to kind right. of communicate with them and uh, perhaps you can get back to the motions to let the... Uh, yes, definitely. All right. Is there any other new business? Uh, so I'd like to, um, if I may, ask a question. So I've been saying for about nine months now that we have no way of, we do not, we do not enforce our zoning in town. Um, a, lot, a lot of things ended up on Facebook because they're really sexy. Or this person is, is in, not in compliance. But all over town, I can, I can tell you that things that I sat here conditions we put on properties are not being followed through. At one point, um, I was told, well, why don't you put a list together? You know, i got to put a list together. You know, this is an enforcement job. We don't have one, but we did. So the question is, what do other towns do? It is, and this might be a question you can ask our, our intern guys, is there already a program out there that, that will, you know, list it for you, a data sheet? You know, Jeff brought up a a place on that road. They're supposed to be inspected every six months. I don't think they've ever been inspected ever. Right? Everybody's worried about the, the dump site down here, right? Because that's a big deal. Well, we actually have a place ready to be shut down. It's supposed to be inspected every six months. Right. So it could be a year. Okay. So basically, an example. Okay. So basically, what you're saying is that you would like to see an improvement in the information systems for. No. Uh, I'm saying we need something now. Does it already exist? Right. Do so we, do we don't have to invent it. But I mean, it, it would be an information system as opposed to the other part is to say to track whether or not a variance has been granted, Maybe. a condition of approval, uh, whether there is an outstanding unnoticed uh, violation against a place. Basically, so we might even already have it in our software we, and not know. We had a discussion about this in the office because um, we had a couple of situations where people had violations. And a letter had been written and there was no follow-up it said in 10 days you have not complied but there was nothing after that so i've already talked to mike damato our interim zoning officer about how to put something into place to make sure that those items don't sit and then they stay addressed good that so would, something will work. <laughs> okay and that would that would be for violations but i believe that you're because you're speaking you're, you're also talking about commissions that approve it's pretty important. variances mm -hmm. and the like. What's the point of the special exception if we never follow up on a special exception? Right. And then 10 years from now, we go to the, to the new owner and say, hey, did you know that you're supposed to do this? I got enforcement now. Right. 
So the things that you're talking about, tracking, are conditions of approval, variances, outstanding notices of violations. Uh, is there something else that goes on that list? I think that's about it, but I mean, it sounds sarcastic here. Isn't that what zoning enforcement officers do? Well, it does, but it sounds like uh, there's some kind of an information systems failure. I'm, and that that's I'm hoping that there is a, some kind of computer software that will be open. There's, there's been another side to it, too. It, 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 it's a regulatory side. Uh, putting into the regulations stipulations about periodic inspections for specific uses. It's widely done in housing, but less widely done, in, and it's a particular problem in special exception uses by their nature. Uh, and I asked, I asked John uh, to look at what other towns do in terms of systematic inspection as part of the regulation. And that there are certain cases in Connecticut, in Connecticut where you can have inspection mandated annually as part of approval. You can mandate a regular inspection of a compliance and if the inspection is paid for by the you by the person who gets inspected, it's mandated as part of approval. Okay, so, so we're looking into that side of it. How you do it mechanically, how you do it legally, and how you pay for it. Okay, so basically you're talking about a computer <coughs> tracking system, possibly with the input of uh, when a periodic inspection might be due. Periodic inspection. All right. So it's, it's not just special exceptions and uh, variance tracks and the like, but it's also adding a layer that says perhaps a special exception, again, depending on what the special exception is for, might require annual or biannual or every five year inspection. That too would be tracked through the registration which you're talking about. Is that correct? Okay. I'm going to get done anyway. This is all that we have in the special exceptions we have in our farm applications. We have um, the uh, obligatory duty of the farm and the CEO to have annual inspections by the state of Connecticut. And since the special exceptions have been changed for zoning, I don't believe there's been one state of Connecticut Department of Agricultural Inspection on any of the farms that have been approved, and they were parts of the special exception. So when we look at the automatic failure, where we talked about here, we talked about another piece of property, these automatic things that are supposed to happen, whose liability are they? Are they the liability of a zoning enforcement officer, or are they the liability of the property owner to give those? Just like you're supposed to renew certain applications for uh, different different uh, apartments and things like that, we have to determine whose responsibility. Kathy, I'm saying that loud enough so you can sit there and see. There's one failure right off the bat. That in the special exception, there's a land use approval that's deemed by the state of Connecticut, whether or not it's farming or not. And we're sitting here going, where are they? They take up to three to six months to get an approval. <clears throat> So that too is uh, as part of this entire system is that whose responsibility is it to initiate the inspection of the compliance regulations we're talking about. I have one more new our case. Is there anything, uh, any other new business? I have one, one last is that I'd like to, with, with your commission's approval for Kathy Daskar, interim CEO, to contact CBS and let them know that they are uh, in violation of the agreement and that they need to there's a maintenance yeah. agreement, there's a watering agreement, uh, the weeds are, I mean, you're almost at the lake now anyway, so you pick which one you want to do. Basically, uh, you're, um, so your request is to call, call the CBS. I mean, it's recent. Call the CBS. I don't think they have driven by, but they haven't touched it. Is there any other new business? Motion to adjourn. Second. Third. <laughs> Fourth. <laughs> Is there any discussion of a motion to adjourn? Those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Abstaining? We have adjourned at the board of the board. This video provided as a public service by Kirk Carr.
the Kirkster. <laughs> Thank you for watching.